That was Prime Minister Narendra Modi today speaking to us uh, not just as an administrator, not just uh, as the head of India, but also as a statesman. He was addressing the nation as if he was the head of the family and his family members were in trouble, were panic-stricken, were facing trials and tribulations, were facing challenges. And he came there to soothe and address the panicked nerves and all uh, the, the various kinds of problems that every single family in this country is facing. The Prime Minister was telling people of India that he, as the head of the family and his government, is standing by. And it's not just the government. It is really an issue of discipline amongst the people of India who have to recognize and follow their own responsibility in fighting this war against Corona. He also called out to the entrepreneurial spirit of India. He called out also to the requirement of a man helping another man, a citizen of India helping another citizen of India to tide over the current challenges, problems and crisis that India is going through, something that many countries across the world are going through. He also spoke as the custodian of national resolve, of a national spirit and character that says that we will win this fight against the disease and we will not bicker against each other. We will not point out each other's problems and mistakes. We should not get into a blame game situation. Isn't it time to put the pandemic and fight against the panic? pandemic right on top instead of petty partisan politics? That is the question that India needs to answer tonight. At a time like this, is there going to be any other fight back unless we unite as a nation? In fact, the Prime Minister saluted our scientists, our medical fraternity, our frontline warriors. He also saluted the private sector, our vaccine manufacturers, uh, the indigenous spirit of India to provide such vaccines at a time uh, when the world was fighting for solutions against the coronavirus. This uh, really going out as a salute to our national spirit. In fact, this is the time the Prime Minister clearly pointed out. And this is the subtext, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a time to cooperate. This is the time for us to help not just our friends, not just our family, but even strangers. Because this is a time when a country can show its character, when citizens can prove their character, their might and their resolve. And this he said, was on the eve of uh, Ram Navmi. And he said that Purshottam Ramji had read out Maryadas. And Maryadas are limits and boundaries that are set up. And today the COVID, the COVID challenge was such that these boundaries needed to be respected. If each one of us respects these boundaries, then clearly this country can fight the fight against the coronavirus. He also said that every single state should look as lockdown as the last option, not the first easy way out, because India needed to fight against COVID and against the lockdown which stalls economic progress. So economic growth and war against corona have to be fought side by side. And that was the message given by the prime minister. He spoke live from his studio at his residence at 7 Lok Kalyan Marg. It was not a recorded speech. It was a speech that came from the heart, clearly taking his own countrymen into confidence. And joining me tonight uh, is uh, Dr. Anand Ranganathan. Also joining me is Afar Islam, spokesperson of the BJP, and Mr. Raghav Chadda, uh, also spokesperson of the Ahmadmi Party. And I want to come across uh, straight to you, Dr. Anand Ranganathan. This was a prime minister who clearly did not indulge in any blame game. All he said was that our dharma is not about Ram Naomi or Ramazan. Our dharma is not about pointing finger, fingers at each other for what one had failed to do or the other had failed to do. 
what he pointed out was the dharma of a nation not just to help friends and family but to help strangers and to stand tall and solid with resolve to fight this big challenge wasn't that the message dr anand ranganath uh, good evening navika uh, no, i i think it was an important speech in two respects uh, one of course he uh, <clears throat> he went on to uh, talk in terms of uniting the country against this raging pandemic and the two important things that came out was of course that there's not going to be a a uniform lockdown in india which was very reassuring for businesses who've lost millions uh not only uh you know hundreds of thousands of lives but also their livelihood and number two i'm so glad he did that because as a scientist i think the overarching thing to focus on right now is vaccination you know opening of vaccination for all above 18 couldn't have come sooner beyond the overarching reasons that i will go into a minute navika there are two quick points <clears throat> as to why i say this and i'm so glad that the prime minister uh, you know mentioned this number one our vaccine capacity vaccination capacity is around 6 million per day we have never achieved that the max we have come to is 4.2 million for those and that was two weeks ago in fact unfortunately the drive is slowing down so the prime minister's speech and exhortation couldn't have come sooner two days ago only 0.7 million took the first dose and yesterday it was only 1.9 million today it is only 1.6 million what could be the reason a vaccine hesitancy that is why it is crucial that the government provides data as to how many of the 22000 indians who unfortunately died of covid since the beginning of the second wave have been vaccinated the usa has provided this data out of 75 million vaccinated only 5800 contracted covid and only 75 of them died which is just one in a million the more we know this data the more we will shed our hesitancy b it could be that fewer people are venturing out to get vaccinated because we are right in the middle of a raging pandemic and hospitals are of course hot spots see lockdowns in many cities and districts have also affected the vaccination take delhi for example it vaccinated 40000 yesterday today on lockdown day it has vaccinated only 33000 and that is why opening of vaccination for all above 18 would not only bridge this gap of around 4 million between our daily vaccination capacity and daily vaccination but also remove the vaccine wastage that varies from 5 to 10% now to the overarching reasons mamika please give me the reason number 1 Set aside the issue of whether we should have opened vaccination for all above 18 to months ago. Of course, we should have, but we just didn't have enough doses to go around for 70 percent of our population. Given our monthly manufacturing capacity was only 70 million shots, so restricting to older age groups made total sense. In fact, even opening up now, it is sardonic blessing that we are vaccinating way under capacity, and therefore we can accommodate over 18 to. But to avoid mad rush that will occur when the second wave ends. We should vaccinate first and foremost in hotspot cities and states like Delhi, Maharashtra, and for this. It is great that Modi and the center has left it to the states to pitch in and buy vaccines. They shouldn't have any excuses now for not being able to vaccinate rapidly their population, especially Delhi and Maharashtra. Navika, masks and vaccines are the only weapons against COVID. Na dua, na dawa, sirf mukhata aur tika. That is what uh, the prime minister said. Okay, the why be, kadai be, both have to go hand in hand. And Raghav Chadha, I want to bring you in. I want to bring you in because clearly the dharma tonight is only going to be one which is to unite. Yes there have been problems, yes there are shortages, yes uh, you know medicines injections are not available, uh, the vaccines uh, have not been available at different uh, points in time in one place or the other. Of course everything is not ideal. But can can we win this fight? Uh, without uniting uh, raghav chadha because you know when we see tweets coming out uh, from uh, you know several political leaders uh, take for example mr rahul gandhi uh, you know who points fingers at oxygen shortages uh, who points fingers uh, uh, at the vaccine strategy and then says oh i get uh, the credit for uh, the government opening up i want to ask you as a political party in the opposition do you think this fight against the virus can be fought with political parties and state governments in confrontation with the center or can the only mantra be to unite and work together uh navika first of all i don't speak for rahul gandhi but certainly as part of the opposition i can say that giving constructive suggestions on important issues of policy is the dharma of Uh, uh you know any opposition political party i think any politician or any member of my party or any member of any other political party that has given suggestions 
vis-a-vis the va- revisiting the vaccine policy, whether vis-a-vis increase uh, in the uh, you know the supply of oxygen to states, so on and so forth, has only did his dharma, and it should be taken in an extremely positive way rather than looking at it from 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 a political standpoint. Number one, number two, I heard the prime minister speak just now. I I along with I think several Indians were hoping that an administrator will talk to his. <laughs> uh you know uh, his his people his countrymen and not a motivational speaker what we what we instead heard was goody goody things which are already known to the entire uh, country i was quite frankly looking forward to being told as to how the uh, production of oxygen in this country is going to be increased how the imports of remdes- remdesivir will be increased how the supplies of remdesivir and oxygen will be managed to state so on and so forth however all of that was 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 missing and therefore i don't think that uh, at least a, a significant part of the pop- population doesn't stand reassured from this uh, speech of the honorable prime minister and certainly all these calls and appeals to uh, you know the people of india to stay indoors would have sounded very well and very credible had the prime minister and his party men not been campaigning and conducting extensive rallies and road shows in west bengal i mean you you saw uh, uh, on the day india crossed the 2 lakh per day case mark the prime minister held three rallies and the home minister held four rallies mega rallies in west bengal addressing lakhs and lakhs of people so of course the people can see this hypocrisy who are we kidding number 1 number 2 there is something called as a disaster management act that is in force which essentially means that the that the uh, uh, the entire policy decisions regarding the fight against covid stands centralized it's the union government that takes the um, all major decisions and then instructs the states to execute them very little legroom is given to states on a number of issues as far as the fight against covid-19 is concerned so therefore uh, of course but raghav chadda raghav chadda may i may i may i just read out a statement that has come from an oxygen producing uh company inox which supplies oxygen to delhi and uh, this statement clearly points out that in pashchim vihar there was a hospital that was running out of oxygen and i think uh, chief minister arvin kejriwal alluded to this incident the fact of the matter is while you point out to the hypocrisy of the bjp the fact is that on the borders of delhi on on the singur side as well as on the uh, gaziabad side with up there are farmers protest that are still going on well i'm well, not <clears throat> i'm not questioning the right of farmers to protest but the fact is traffic is being stalled and the reason pointed out by this oxygen manufacturer is that the supply was delayed due to traffic jams now i'm pointing out to this hypocrisy raghav chadda simply because you know instead of saying oxygen production badha dijiye jo hai usko istemal karne ke liye kam se kam green corridors to banwa dijiye you know you can so, appeal to yes, the uh, farmers at least yes so first of all uh, as far as the problem that every state today is facing is regarding supply of oxygen we and is not about logistics of getting that oxygen from the production space, uh, point to the hospitals as far as i understand logistics is not as of now a big issue the issue is supply i have been given to understand that india is at this point in time only producing about 7000 metric ton of oxygen and the demand has of, of course surpassed the supply side and therefore what we need to do is increase the demand what we need to do is curb industrial use of oxygen and what we what certainly need to do navika is stop export of oxygen you will be surprised to know just how we went on this indiscriminate export spree when it comes to the vaccines we have also exported thousands and thousands of metric ton of oxygen in the last few weeks to countries like bangladesh i think the government of india completely uh was blindsided or was has completely failed in reading the situation however however i wish to say as somebody who's part of the administration in delhi it is time to work together i am not saying that uh, i am not pointing fingers all i wish to say is that let's work together let's now find solutions today as we speak navika about 12 to 14 major hospitals in delhi are running on low oxygen their oxygen supply will be over in 8 to 12 hours i urge the union government through your channel 
please give us oxygen it's a question of lives of hundreds and hundreds of people i request you to be charitable and generous when you look at the oxygen demand of delhi well zafar islam uh you know this is this is something uh, that is a practical situation yes uh, as as the prime minister has stated it is time it is time for us uh, not to panic but the general people the general public the aam aadmi can do only this much which is to be psychologically prepared to help each other follow the instructions in terms of covid appropriate behavior which the prime minister has said should be done and people will respond they have responded in the past to the prime minister but what do you do about the situation of lack of availability of remdesivir of oxygen uh, of of uh, you know trucks that leave uttar pradesh do not reach delhi sim simply because uh, you know the state uh, police itself diverts it to hospitals in uttar pradesh this is a practical problem and delhi is a non oxygen producing state and it's the capital city of india how are these problems going to be addressed mr zafar islam is a very valid question raised by mr raghav chadda well i do not discount whatever has been raised by the representative of aap But let me tell you that uh, the honorable prime minister when he addressed the nation it has lent a lot of confidence to every citizen of this great country they may be having some questions but those questions have been answered by the honorable prime minister because he was clearly aware of all this situation of uh, first the situation and what is going on in the mind of people of this country so he has been able to address and people will feel uh, assured and reassured because of the statement by the honorable prime minister in terms of the availability of oxygen will be made available oxygen will be made available the production will be ramped up the medicine which is which is uh, uh, not available in the market which also production has gone up and which be made available he is fully alive to the situation all he wanted the countrymen not to panic because zafar islam zafar parties. islam these second. are Just homilies second. these are not practical no. solutions as we no, are no, speaking no. as i'm on this de- uh, you know debate uh, i have messages from two of my colleagues one needs remdesivir himself the other needs it for a family member his wife and his mother i want to ask you what should i respond to them because it is not available in the open market you, you, you know and and you, and this is the problem that normal citizens are facing well i i do understand uh, navika this this situation is a, is a extraordinary situation and i'm sure that uh, everybody is as concerned as raga chadda or for that matter you are concerned and that is the message which the prime minister has given to the nation that he is fully aware and alive to the situation and he is making the preparedness on pay all the preparedness have been made which will be made available to the citizen let me tell you one thing which is very important navika that this is the time which the honorable prime minister also very candidly said that there is absolutely no wide room to politicize the issue and those those politicians who are trying to politicize like raghav chadda was attempting here will absolutely will not get any response from the people because people what people need is support from the government from the yeah. government we also let me get in or, let me get or, in or dr suman siraman let me get in dr suman siraman dr suman siraman what the government has done over the last 24 hours is free vaccine from uh, central control uh, you know and and allow 50% of the vaccine produced which should be sold in the open market what the congress has now come back and said free vaccine from center but it will not tell its states that they should be provided free of cost it wants the subsidies from the center to go uh, it takes credit for the expansion after questioning the efficacy you question rahul gandhi questioned the efficacy of the vaccines uh, whether tests had been conducted in india or not and then began to clamor for the same vaccines uh, and and i want to i want to ask you that uh, uh, you know when when he takes credit for the fact that the vaccine uh, uh, process has been liberalized uh, and and the import restrictions uh, have been removed the fact is that he puts fear in the mind of uh, the janta that you are being discriminated against because uh, 45 uh, to above 60 all age groups gets free vaccine and now because you are 18 to 45 age group you will not get where has the prime minister stopped any state government to go and subsidized or give free it uh, vaccines to their citizens they began the process 
showed the way and and left it for the states to manage their situation do you think there is a treasure Anandika. trove that the prime minister is sitting on that he can actually give uh, free vaccines to 138 crore people no one second navika first of all the tweet of rahul gandhi is because there is still a lack of clarity among the state governments starting on multiple issues regarding the circular which came out yesterday including on the procurement process are they going to have to bid and get these vaccines will the center be putting a price cap on it how is this process actually going to play out that is not clear so there is a very valid uh, point in asking this question please clarify are is the center going to cap the price of these vaccines or is it just going is to be open what, bidding is that what is that what rahul gandhi has said that, that please is clarify that is that what rahul gandhi minute. has said that relates to what the states need to do whether they can afford to give it free to their citizens between 18 and 45 or not it depends on how much money the state will have to pay to procure it first point second as far as the oxygen supplies are concerned the report which came out earlier today spoke of 9000 plus metric tons of oxygen having been exported almost double of what was exported the previous year so there have been significant lapses the third point i wanted to make and this is a very important issue now because you spoke about somebody asking you for remdesivir people including the medical community need to understand that remdesivir is not a drug that significantly reduces mortality it is being used quite indiscriminately so the ima should intervene and send guidelines out to the doctors because in most parts of the world it is extremely selectively used and it is not to be used as a as a kind of a, for all covid patients who are in hospital one more point now as far as this vaccine program is concerned um, i have a question to mr zafar islam if you can tell me sir what is the time frame within which we propose to vaccinate our population now we have about 600 to 700 million 50, 50 crore million is the target by the end of june mr dr suman sir aman 50 crore oh. is the target by the end of june the government is oh. setting it if you if the clarification oh, on procurement and tendering Excuse is not me navika they are unveiling a program if you were watching times now yesterday we had access they will allow corporates to uh, inoculate their uh, oh, their own now uh, employees their the families vaccine. they will allow Now, PSU. Now, there are several things in the pipeline. Do Dr. Suman Siraman, Rome was not built in a day. But let me get in Anand Ranganathan. One minute. Let me yeah. get in Anand Ranganathan. Anand Ranganathan, can you hear the clamor for the uh, vaccine that's coming in from uh, Dr. Suman Siraman as well as some other political parties? Uh, number one, they opposed uh, co-vaccine and said Bharat Biotech vaccines are not dependable. There are no studies. Mat karo, mat jayenge Indians. Then. they have taken credit for vaccines that have been approved uh, they wanted curb on kumbh and rallies but do you see the farm protests that are going on in punjab nobody will nobody will talk about that is and akali dal will come out it? and say that you know this is the success of our rallies uh, then uh, they say va- vaccine bias uh, in distribution uh, look at the liberalized vaccine policy they have questions on that as well they wanted universalization of vaccines but now they are giving the discrimination uh, uh, fear mongering that oh you will not get it free uh, also uh, they 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 think that there is some mary poppins bag that uh, the prime minister carries or nirmala sitaraman carries with her and you open it and you can keep getting out subsidies Both to hand over to the entire country and the states have no July responsibility 2020. dr anand ranganathan both countries play yeah, their order for vaccine dr suman ranganathan i don't know india place it don't do that the question been addressed to 2021. me 2021 please don't do that sorry please, please. go ahead yeah thank you no Na- navika uh, as we speak i think it is the congress state of chatisgarh where the chief minister says he is not has been consistently saying that he is not going to allow the administration of covax and uh, the congress state of punjab was given i think uh, hundreds maybe a couple of hundreds or more of ventilators by the center they have been gathering dust for the past few months so let's not talk about that but i have I am glad that uh, Mr Raghav Chadda who is the spokesperson of uh, Aam Aadmi Party raised very pertinent issues but of course in the end he said look I am not finger pointing except that he pointed all his 
uh, eight fingers and two thumbs. But I think that's important because he criticism is valid and criticism should be accepted. And he he raised two very valid points. Number one was the hypocrisy of the prime minister, where he's been addressing la- rallies left, right, and center, and here he is talking about the rampaging pandemic. And number two. He did raise this important point about the oxygen being exported. I think it was thirteen and a half thousand metric tons to Bangladesh, which is also important. And I think these these two issues have been raised. But I want to ask him, Raga, in the spirit of uh, uh, you know unity and camaraderie between people, all Indians battling COVID. Let's see. Issue number one: Are you prepared to say? I'm not talking as a, you know asking you as a up up spokesperson, just as a human being, a rational human being. Do you think now the farmers' protest should be disbanded? considering that you are against all rallies and all gathering including all religious and political gathering can you say that and number two when you talk about uh, you know why didn't we force or why didn't the prime minister force the shortage of oxygen is it not true that barely four or five days ago our our chief minister i include myself in that our chief minister arvind kejriwal said delhi walon oxygen ki koi kami nahi hai can you address these two issues and finally let me bang this one in as well how much is your advertising budget for the fourth coming year and how much has it been for the last year okay i'll respond may respond raghav chadda thank you so very quickly uh, navika the question that i had raised regarding mass congregations uh, in rallies addressed <laughs> by elected representatives holding important position constitutional positions in the government of india or that of the prime minister and that of the home minister who are raised merely because they are in charge of running the country the buck stops at their tab- table they are the principal administrators of india the farmers are not the principal administrators rakesh tikar is not the prime minister uh, and and other leaders are not home ministers it's the prime minister and the home minister who must lead by example and therefore uh, i raise yeah. that point number 1 number 2 as far as the honorable chief minister of delhi's remarks are concerned navika yes uh the previous speaker is right the chief minister has said that uh we are working very hard things are under control we will set things right but he also said in in uh, 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 when he was referring to assistance from union government that yes we have written to them we have requested them to supply us oxygen etc and we are very hopeful of a positive response we will work together we will work shoulder to shoulder like we did last year so therefore i still stand by what my chief minister had said he was absolutely right we are still very positive in fact through your channel i appeal to the union government that please give us oxygen and if let me if zafar islam saab is the official <coughs> spokesperson of the government of india i would request him to assure all delhiites through this most viewed channel times now that adequate oxygen supplies will be given to delhi and lastly as far as advertisement is concerned let me tell you that nobody forget in india in the subcontinent or in, in the entire world spends more money on publicity and advertisement and a goal plating his own image than the prime minister of india shri narendra there we go if one now, to, now if we want to compare figures we could we I could do that must, i must be allowed day. to rebut there is no you want, rebut rebut you want to rebut him you want to rebut him dr anand ranganathan yes yes i asked him Do- dr anand question. ranganathan wants to rebut you Yes, uh, to to my good friend Raghav Chadda, I asked you three pointed questions, and I haven't obtained answers from either any one of those. So you are a sterling politician. We will go very far in politics. We are possibly looking at the next Chief Minister of Delhi. Number one, I asked you: Should farmers protest that are actively hot spots of COVID? Should they be disbanded? You talked about something else. Transfer to Prime yes Minister no. and Home number, Minister Amit Shah. Yes, number two, number two, I asked you. uh did arvind kejriwal foresee the shortage of oxygen you had no clue you said no he talked about let's get things together have you seen his speech today and number 3 i asked you pointedly what is your advertising budget i i have i have I criticized bjp for their advertising budget as well but you did not answer what is your advertising budget for the last year has been and what will be for the next well, year okay, I mean, no, raghav chadda no, no, raghav no, chadda we live in a no, democracy no, no. we live in a democracy no, no. where no, no. rights and demands are respected but certainly accountability is demanded too so respond to dr anand ranganathan before yeah, i get I mean, in mr riju so, datta in no no i never said that the chief minister never uh, you know could not foresee this uh, uh, demand supply gap in oxygen in fact 
One day prior to holding that press conference to which the previous speaker has referred to, the Honorable Chief Minister wrote a letter to Mr. Piyush Goyal and to several other functionaries in the government of India and requested them to augment uh, oxygen supplies. He highlighted the problem much before he held that press conference. So, of course, he could foresee the shortage. But in a very reconciliatory way, in a very constructive spirit of working together, as a, in, in, in a statement-like approach, the Chief Minister of Delhi, Sri Arvind Kejriwal, addressed the people of Delhi, reassured them. And when my Chief Minister addresses people, he addresses them... With well, that's not what he said in an interview immediately uh, after. He said there are no problems in oxygen supply. Well, you could admit, you could admit that the situation has changed between 18th of April and the 20th of April. But Raghav Chadda, uh, Raghav Chadda, Zafar Islam wants to come in. Zafar Islam, Zafar Islam. Can you give me 30 seconds, Navika? May I just please? I have, I have, just give me 30 okay. seconds. What, the reason why I am pressing on this point, the reason why I am again and again underlining this oxygen shortage is because, and I am now going to read out to you the exact situation of oxygen in Delhi because many of viewers of Times Now are Delhiites. Deen Dayal Upadhyay Hospital has 12 hours of oxygen left. Burari Hospital, 8 hours of oxygen left. Ambedkar Hospital, 24 hours. Deep Chand Bandhu, eight hours. We have Baba the graphics Baba running. We have the graphics I mean, running. The updated exactly. graphics are on Navika, the screen, Raghav Chadda. But Navika. Zafar Islam what? wants to Zafar Islam want wants to, to respond BJP. to you. I know Will Zafar Islam supply? and Biju Dutta want to work. come into the debate. But ladies and gentlemen, I need to take a very short break. When I come back, once again... All the questions raised will be responded to by Zafar Islam of the BJP and of course the Trinamool Congress which clearly has another point of view on the way things are being managed on the COVID front. All that after a break. The news hour at 9 will be right back after the break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and Riju Datta of the Trinamool Congress uh, joining the debate at this uh, point. And uh, I'm uh, sorry for coming to you late, but Riju Datta, I want to ask you, Bengal, despite all the election fervor, hasn't thrown up the kind of numbers uh, that possibly were being feared. I want to ask you, Riju Datta, is there enough testing? Is there enough uh, attention that is being paid to uh, the spread of coronavirus? Or uh, are we sitting in a bubble where we don't know what the reality is? Uh, Navika Ji, thank you for coming to me. And <clears throat> I will first tell you that on a, our daily average of vaccination is 39,000. We have got 4,000 extra beds now, 400 more extra ambulances that has been declared by CM. And we are uh, on the verge of opening 200 more safe homes, which will drastically increase the bed capacity of Bengal. So it is, it is bad, but it is not as bad as compared to the other states of this country. Now, Navika Ji, I will uh, beg you with folded hands to give me 30 seconds uninterrupted time because I have a lot of bones to pick, not with BJP, but with the person who has been voted by 120 crore Indians. Now, when the number of COVID cases is spiraling and all engines, double engine, triple engine, all have failed, the center has chosen tactically to indulge in an empty rhetoric and shying away from the responsibility. I believe it is too little too late. Every citizen of this country will remember how thousands and thousands of lives have been lost by sheer incompetence, negligence and arrogance of a few clowns sitting in the central government. This vaccination program, Navika Ji, is like the demonetization where you can go to the ATM but there is no money. I, on behalf of my chief minister, who Navikaji, again wrote a, Navikaji, who wrote a letter, Navikaji, let me please finish. Who is Navikaji, referring Navikaji, as the clown? Navikaji, Navikaji, who is Navikaji, referring as the clown? No, no, Riju Datta, Riju Datta, to use the terminology of a clown, clown for the Prime Minister, do you know, do you know he is a, a Prime Minister who has been elected by the people of India, people of India... 303 seats, 282. Okay. I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt you. There is an objection. There is an objection to the terminology used. I said objection sustained. Objection sustained. Take back the word that you used for the Prime Minister. Take back the word for, uh, used for the Prime Minister. And, and make your point. But, but first take back the word. First take back the word and then make your point. I will not allow Zafar Islam to come in if you take back the word. 
Navika ji, first of all, I categorically say it on national TV. I have not referred to the Prime Minister as the clown. I referred to the so people who did you, who, who did you are, are the people at the oh, who are who are saying who are 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 who
Today, the Honourable Prime Minister requested that not to politicise the issue. I was not doing it. But you, I, even though I was tempted to, but time and again, you don't no harm in putting the government in the dock. We do not shy away from being criticised. We, we do not shy away from being criticised. But unlike your <laughs> you always some this case, I have made this. I, I have made this arrangement, that arrangement, good condition, and when the time comes... One minute, Riju Datta, Riju Datta, Riju Datta, Riju Datta, calm down, Riju Datta, have a glass of water. He is speaking about Delhi government, not about Bengal government. Allow him to make his point. See, Bengal government, now it's a history for Trinamool Congress. They will they will make this kind of a statement time and again because they know that there is a matter of days. Though my Didi guy, you know, you are well, well, of that. No, 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 okay, I'm, all right. I'm well, Anand, 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 Anand Ranganathan, Anand Ranganathan, 10 seconds to Anand Ranganathan. He wanted to come in 10 seconds to Anand Ranganathan. Anand Ranganathan, there you have it. The politics yeah. right there in the middle. And we are we are in the middle of the salvos going above us, you know, and in front of us, behind us. Yes. No, no, Navika, this was all too predictable. Both Islam Saab or Rijuda, hypocrisy mein naha rahe hai. Hypocrisy ki balti bhari diya aur ye magga ek dusre ko exchange kar rahe hai. Ek tum dalo ek magga, ek magga mein dalta hu. Both these parties are culpable if tomorrow Bengal explodes as far as COVID is concerned. In fact, right now, the, it is already higher than what its peak was during the first wave. So it is a little behind Delhi well, and Maharashtra. Well, but well. it's getting there. Well, ladies... Ladies and gentlemen, you know, as they say, as they say, nobody can walk out of this smelling of roses as far as politicization of the war against COVID is concerned. If there are state governments that haven't done their bit, there will be questions that the center will also have to answer. But the prime minister knows that. And he said his address today was to put all of this behind us and to look at the war in front, concentrate on the war in front by being together by being united and by being an India with a firm resolve. Whether it is political parties in states or the centre, whether it is people themselves, whether it is just friends and family or also strangers, the fact is we have to stand together. I am saying thank you to all my panellists tonight and leaving you with two sound bites, very important sound bites from the Prime Minister's address at 8:45 pm this evening good night iske liye bhi kaam kare ki dar ka mahol kam ho sake log afwa aur bhram mein na aaye sathiyon aaj ki sthiti mein hame desh ko lockdown se bachana hai main rajyon se bhi anurodh karunga कि वो लॉकडाउन को अंतिम विकल्प के रूप में ही इस्तेमाल करें लॉकडाउन से बचने की भरपूर कोशिश करनी है और माइक्रो कंटेनमेंट जोन पर ही ध्यान केंद्रित करना है हम अपनी अर्थव्यवस्था की सेहत भी सुधारेंगे और देशवासियों की सेहत का भी ध्यान रखेंगे साथियों आज नवरात्रि का आखिरी दिन है कल रामनवमी है और मर्यादा पुरुषोत्तम श्री राम का हम सभी को यही संदेश है कि हम मर्यादाओं का पालन करें कोरोना के इस संकट काल में कोरोना के बचने के जो भी उपाय है कृपया करके उनका पालन शत प्रतिशत करिए दवाई भी कड़ाई भी इस मंत्र को कभी भी भूलना नहीं है ये मंत्र जरूरी है वैक्सीन के बाद भी जरूरी है रमजान के पवित्र महीने का भी आज सातवां दिन है रमजान हमें धैर्य आत्मसंयम और अनुशासन की सीख देता है कोरोना के खिलाफ जंग जीतने के लिए अनुशासन भी उसकी भी उतनी ही जरूरत है 
जब जरूरी हो तभी बाहर निकले कोविड अनुशासन का पूरा पालन करें मेरा आप सभी से यही आग्रह है